My hope for our time here, which will take about an hour to do, is to really talk about the linkage between uh, being a great, powerful recruiter and marketing. At Comp Health, we've made a choice to proactively link those two things, believing that the best of the pair um, comes when we work actively together um, to both recruit on an individual basis and market to a more general population. In the spirit of the theme of our conference, um, marketing has evolved. What has marketing evolved to? Marketing has evolved to a world of understanding people, understanding people's interactions, whether that be social, online, through media, through word of mouth. It's about a person's need and helping that person get a message you want them to hear, right? One of the things that hopefully um, you know, I can do today is give you a very, very simple framework to think about marketing and how that can then help you in your day jobs. This exact framework can help you on internal com communications just as much as it could in external marketing. Who am I targeting? What do I need to say to them? And how am I going to say it? As simple as that, what do I mean by that when I talk about the marketing planning process for recruiting and marketing integration? First is about understanding your target audience. You'll hear me talk a little bit about this today. Target audience is a marketing, it's marketing speak for who the person is, right? So we'll talk about understanding them. And I mean understanding the individual, but also the general population you're trying to recruit. Part two is, has two parts to it, the what. One part is what you want them to hear about your job, your facility, or your community, right? That's what you're telling them. Part two is what's relevant to them. It's what they want to hear. Those two things ideally are aligned. They may not be, right? So recognizing that difference and making sure you're delivering on both sides of it. We're going to go into each of these more specifically. And part three of the day, we'll be talking about the how. That's the practical choices you're making when marketing. It's about marketing, putting that message where the candidate is looking, but also being in a place where the candidate will be. They may not be there today. They may be there tomorrow. It may not be about jobs, but you want your message to hit them when they are relevant, when they're open and, and willing to hear it. Recruiting is about the specific batch. As we think about supplementing that for marketing, we think about supplementing it from the platform of what's the general persona of person I want in my facility? So we generalize. So marketing is about generalizing the persona of who you are looking for so that you can find them. So I'd like to start by introducing you to someone, a general persona of Dr. Julie, okay? So we're going to talk about personas by actually describing a person. It's more easy to understand their job searching behavior if you just talk about them, who they are. So Dr. Julie. Dr. Julie is 30. She is just coming out of an internal medicine residency program. She's looking for a job. She, because of her age and demographics, is a social marketing person. I can tell you 80% of physicians in the 30 to 35 age range use social marketing for their own life. And that is predominantly Facebook and secondarily YouTube, okay? So, but she's there, right? You get it, she's 30. She's busy. Right? But she does one key thing. She likes to rock climb, be out west, be outdoors. She prioritizes her personal health. She feels like she can't be an effective physician unless she demonstrates wellness for herself. Okay? So this is Julie. Julie starts by looking. Best hospitals in the western United States. She wants to rock climb. She's doing her research. She specifically starts, and she actually wants to know in the year. She's savvy in the way she searches, so she adds the year. U.S. News and World Report happen to be the top things in the search index. She jumps into their website. She researches facilities. She's, and I, I picked Utah, St. Mark's Hospital locally here. She actually has heard about St. Mark's. She actually searches by zip code and tries to find the facility. Once she's there, she finds St. Mark's Facebook page. This happens to be a snapshot of St. Mark's Facebook page. She's a Facebook person. This is what she do, does. She looks there very quickly just to research. She's pretty excited that they are committed to fitness. That's important to her. She believes in that in her personal life. She sees a career section and she clicks on it. This is what it looks like. This is their ATS plugin to Facebook. You actually can click and search and apply and learn more about the facility. This will jump you into St. Mark's website. She wants to know the reputation of this facility 
in the eyes of the population that the health is for. This happens to be on health grades, just a research of the patient care at this facility, but she's doing it. This is what she does in her life. On the flip side, meet Tom. So Tom is 58, emergency physician. He's been in his career for 25 years. He is in a different state of mind than Julie. The way he thinks about what he wants is his son just retired, or so just graduated from high school. And he's kind of free a little. He feels that sense of, I can kind of make these decisions for myself right now. He's on social marketing, social media tools, on Facebook, only to track what his son's doing, because it's the only way he knows what's going on in his son's life. That said, he's not there for himself, right? He's not engaging it as a way to learn. So Tom is how he thinks about his career is wholeheartedly different than how Julie does, right? If you think about how he, he would approach a job change, it's different. His consideration set is different. Knowing the who, knowing his persona is important as we think about what we want. He's a very avid reader. He's, been, he's run medical department before, chooses not to do that anymore, but he's a very avid reader of progressive literature. I just happened to pick New England Journal. There are many more, but a lot within the association. He also has colleagues that are his most trusted and important way he finds that information. So let's get back to Julie and think about it. So I'm telling you what we wanted to say or what you could think about. You have a job description and you have your choice for employment branding or that beyond the basics message. But what does Julie want, right? Okay, Julie's got a lot of debt, right? She is a re resident graduate or a resident completer coming. She has a ton of debt. She's been making no money. What matters to her is money, right? That's a basic. I'm not going to talk to you about compensation. You know way more about that than me. She has a husband who needs a career step at the same time as she does. She's thinking about dual career and how she makes that work in the marketplace. They're thinking about having kids, right? They're thinking about schools in the community. This is her world. This is what she wants to hear from you. She doesn't want to hear just your beyond the basics we're an awesome place to work message, right? That, that's good, that's great, important, but not all that's important to her. And she wants to, know, she wants to know if she can keep her pastime up, right? On the flip side, Tom, Tom's trying to pay college stuff that's starting to brew. He wants to be close enough to travel to his family. He wants to interact with the community. He wants to be able to do Habitat Humanity where you're from, where the, your facility is, right? He wants to transfer his likes and interests. So this is his world. He wants to retire soon, but He's making the choice to take a next career step because he can't retire yet, right? It is about giving him continuing to practice medicine, but also giving him the financial wherewithal to set up for retirement and travel. So again, there are two things. There's what you want to say and what they want to hear, and mash, mashing that together. Generally, as we think about it from marketing, we are more telling them what we want to say. In the recruiting cell, in the close, you're trying to match what they want to hear and telling them that you can deliver it specifically, right? So that's the merger. As we think about where to put marketing to find doctors, it's important to consider the general personas of these individuals. These are just too extreme. Your recent residency grad and your late stage physician who's ready for a change to make it more about them than about what has been, which is their family. So starting with this understanding is critical to being able to make the choices on what messages you give to them and where you put them. So we know who we want, right? We know that, right? What's relevant to them is next. What do they want to hear? And what do we want to tell them? It starts with the basics. As a person who reads a lot of job descriptions, I mentioned on Comp Health alone we carry 5,000 jobs. And I am in the profession of marketing jobs, right? So I look at job descriptions. I want to not oversell how important basic clear job descriptions are, but if you haven't done an audit of how you're doing your job description writing, I would highly suggest you go home and do it yesterday. We train our teams to do this, write about the job, about the practice, put keywords that are relevant to the physician and a call to action in a very simple way. It's not harder than that, although it's an art. We say this, write about the specialty, write about the location, and maybe 
if you can do it, one unique feature. Constrained by 65 characters or less, and I'll give you some examples. That's literally the space of 65 characters. A couple of specific. Psychiatrist opportunity in California with four day week, no call. Sounds simple, right? Interventional cardiologist, small facility in scenic Wisconsin. Sometimes all of us as salespeople try to put too many words out there or too few words that don't really sell what your basics are. What the how is, is where you put your marketing and you put it where they are or where you think they'll be, right? And it's, and think of marketing like an ad, right? This is very simple, a job ad, a banner ad, a message, a testimonial about your facility. That's the what you're putting and how do you do it, right? How do you physically put it there? So I'm gonna start back with online search. I cannot emphasize how big this is. Uh, cannot underemphasize how big this is. Google shares about 65% of the online search marketplace Yahoo and Bing make up another 30% roughly between the two. 95% of search is covered by those three properties. Ignore the rest. Arguably ignore everything but Google if you're not doing anything here. Start where the fish are and 65% of the searches happen in Google. I would almost guarantee you that every one of you has great video somewhere in your facility. Whether it be a testimonial video of an employee, whether it be about a, a great story about a community effort you did. It could be as simple as grabbing your iPhone and getting a testimonial up from a physician about why they love to work for you. This does not have to be hard. Ensuring it's there and findable in YouTube is a good place to start. Put it out there. Let someone beyond you tell that story of why to come work with you. Link it to your Facebook page. Have your marketing team link it to your... Some basic things like that are low-hanging fruit to tell your employment branding story. And it's the second largest search engine in the world from a consumer perspective. So these are places, if your physician is looking, this is what they're getting. And the, the, the box being what is being paid for through Google. This is called organic search, natural search. You hear things like search engine optimization. All these words are about getting your something ranked in this body of Google's copy. I want to highlight a couple things. Um, Indeed bears three of the listings in the top five. So when I said earlier they're pulling page views, they're getting a lot of them. One of the ways they're doing it is by having all these spots, right? Someone's clicking there. Now, and the other thing I want to point out is, just look at that second one, family practice physician jobs in New Mexico, dash Indeed. That is coming off the job description, the title I told you about earlier. When I say something's truncated, look down at that very bottom one. New Mexico physician jobs, physician jobs in New Mexico, comma, doctor, dot, dot, dot. That's what I mean when I say it's truncated, right? You're not reading all of what you think is being said there because Google only has so many character spaces. So this is what I mean when we talk about search, when Google looks like. So you ask yourself, well, how is my facility advertising or playing in any of this space? Or are you? It's not hard to do this stuff, right? It's not hard. As simple as hiring, if you don't have the facility, you can get an unpaid intern who wants to learn paid search to come in your facility for 10 hours a week and learn how to put an AdWords campaign together for you. You can do that. This is a chart of the total size of the social marketing, social media landscape. Globally, this is back from 2012, um, September. So Facebook has now cleared a billion global users. This was 955. Almost double now, more than double the next, which is Twitter. So again, you could get worried and say, go home and get a social marketing presence. That can be overwhelming. I'm just saying, go home, ensure your Facebook page, delivers what you think is needed to help candidates choose your facility. They're researching it there, they're online. Make sure you feel good about the message it's delivering. A very simple, again, practical tip, does your LinkedIn page exist? Does your About Us section tell your story in LinkedIn? Do you post jobs in your LinkedIn? Do you, if, I'm sure you're doing great things in your communities. Are you putting them as your status updates? Once a week, it's not high time and intense. Are you putting in your LinkedIn status and talking about the community event you held on health and wellness? So a couple summary tips. The who, start with the profile, make sure it's clear. 
for your specific job, who you want. Also think more generally about a persona. From a what, make sure your basics are right. If they're not, the beyond the basic stuff doesn't matter. You can't get a good job description and title down. You're going to be, it's almost like having a leaky hole in the bucket, right? When you're pouring water in the top, stuff straining out. Get that right. Identify your employment brand message. I call that the beyond the basics. And then work with your marketing team just to try to take a couple tactical steps that you heard and put your message in that new place or that how. 